One. Hello, I am Adam Devano. On my left is Carl Bach and Devin Ferguson, and on my right is Rod Carter. The driving question to our project was what kind of effects stormwater runoff can have on creeks and how it can damage the ecosystem eventually leading into larger bodies of water. What we're going to be going over in our presentation is more of the fundamentals on how this can be prevented and what it exactly does to the ecosystems in the river and how it needs to be stopped. Okay, so to start, I'm going to give you a little background knowledge. And so when people think of infrastructure, most people think of gray infrastructure, which is a term to identify harmful um, materials that are supposed to be helpful for the environment. And some examples of this are pipes, pumps, ditches, and detention ponds that are all supposed to manage stormwater runoff. And with these kind of systems, there's multiple setbacks, such as man um, maintaining the system. Um, it requires continuous maintenance, advanced technical engineering, and mandatory constant improvement. So there's lots of money going into this and work and time to keep these um, operations working efficiently. And uh, many of them had to be expanded due to developing demands of urbanization and cost. So a lot of these corporations have been successful with their upgrades. However, there's still a price. And ex for example, in Oregon, they tried to reduce the amount of stormwater traveling into the sewer system. So they increased um, the amount of pipes and pump stations. Now, this did help their ultimate goal, but it cost $1.4 billion, which is a lot. Um, and so obviously this is um, really cost effective and timely and tedious, so there is a better alternative, which is green infrastructure, which a lot of other groups have already talked a lot about. But basically, is it, it is an approach to control water that it's water control that protects, restores, and um, mimics or imitates natural, the natural water cycle. And instead of damaging the systems, it's building various other ones to benefit the ecosystem environment and overall us as you know, humans and living people. It is effective, economical, and a shortcut to healing the damage we've done. So it's going to be a lot better in the long run and faster. Um, impervious surfaces, uh, they're quite negative, basically, and the definition of impervious is not letting fluid pass through, so already you can tell just by definition that there's not going to be any benefit to that. They're just going to cause more um, problems. And impervious surfaces are artificial and water repelling. Some example of these are road sidewalks, parking lots, driveways, etc. Uh, when you think of all these places, you think we have driveways right outside our house, roads, we need those to get to wherever we're going, we use the sidewalks to walk our dogs, all these different things, and we think we need them, they're everywhere, you know, but um, they're quite harmful in a lot of ways, considering there's also so much of them. Uh, and they're generally made out of very harmful materials such as asphalt, concrete, and so stone and other materials. And none of these surfaces support water runoff. They can cause bacteria to thrive and flourish. flourish. And they heat up stormwater runoff, and the science behind this is conduction when the water makes direct contact with an impervious surface. Uh, the water, the heat from the surface transfers to the water. Um, so we have proven this by doing an experiment around KCTC and KH campus, and in all the areas, the impervious surfaces have had a higher temperature than the vegetation, um, and these surfaces, so these surfaces are relatively smooth and flat, so all of this waste, such as oil from cars and trash and all these things that are bad for the earth, just sit there on them. And when it rains, stormwater not only heats up the water, but it carries all of this waste into the drain or water source that it leads to. So consequently, it's damaging the water environment and every surrounding organism's lives. Uh, 
Um, so the impacts it has on the ecosystem, um, storm water runoff brings pollutants to the receiving water systems. It causes sewer overflow, it impacts water quality and quantity, it increases erosion and flooding, and it decreases groundwater infiltration. Um, so the damages that it causes to aquatic wildlife, it has potential damage to the respiratory systems of aquatic species, and it potentially spreads diseases, and it has potential water contamination, and it can cause low oxygenation in water rivers. All right, this is Adam's slide, so we're going to go to another one. Now you might be wondering, what is effective management of stormwater runoff? What we're trying to prevent is from water going directly into a sewer line or a storm drain that's on the side of the road. If we let the water go through plants or dirt first, or just seep directly into the ground, the plants will help filter out all of the dangerous chemicals that will harm and kill fish. It'll also give the water time to cool down before entering the main streams, which can also cause a lot of damage to the fish. Now you might be wondering, what is effective management of stormwater runoff? What we're trying to prevent is from water going directly into a sewer line or a storm drain that's on the side of the road. Is it the same way? Try again to see if it's for home improvement. Uh, rain barrels at the base of home gutters. This is the slide. So, I mean, directing driveway runoff to a small garden, using permeable materials for sidewalks or patios. Industrial applications uh, include roof gardens, permeable parking lots, and retention ponds. Okay, so these are the responsibilities for the people, or like what we have to do. And this will include like foreseeing the overall goal, like why are we doing this, and the willingness to dedicate ourselves mo time, money, and labor. Um, we're gonna have to de dedicate our time by like actually taking the time to go out and do this stuff, and that also goes along with the labor part of it. And then uh, it will cost money to like make re reparations and uh, like reconstruction with um, taking gray infrastructure and turning it to green. Uh, gray infrastructure is pretty much like what we have or what we see all, the, all over the place now. And I'm pretty sure we all know what green infrastructure is. And then we have to uh, acclimatize uh, ourselves to new ideas, which pretty much means we have to allow ourselves to uh, like make reparations and reconstruct our infrastructures. And the result of uh, us doing these things will be that is that it is beneficial to large scale cities and surrounding ecosystems. Uh, that pretty much means that uh, when you like make like stuff, you make you make oh my gosh, green infrastructures and stuff in large scale cities. Uh, we pretty much know that stuff naturally, like pollutants and stuff, when they're like put in a certain area, they naturally flow and they get into surrounding ecosystems like Grand Rapids, like in the Grand River going to uh, Lake Michigan. So we want to make it better in the bigger cities and where stuff will, like the source of where stuff spreads first. And then the quality of water is directly linked to the quality of our lives and pretty much all organisms. I mean, everything needs water and we prefer that to be clean. I mean, this will influence other countries to do the same things that we are doing. If we take initiative and we start uh, building green infrastructure, other countries will see that and they'll eventually see the benefits and they'll want to do it also. Um, in the end, this will 
preserve the uh, Earth's natural beauty and all of its inhabitants. And that's obviously a plus. Here are sources cited.